Hi, I'm Eric Sabo, and this video is the first of a series on the 800 gallon jacuzzi I got here. I'm going to document all the details of its design and operation for future reference. The tub is one of the main features of the house. Uh, I designed and built this tub in 1990. It's 10 yards of concrete and rebar and weighing in at around 20 tons. So it's not going anywhere real fast. All the piping and jets are buried in the concrete. This tub is something that it's not really desirable to have indoors if you use it every day because of the humidity. I had toyed with the idea of a pool originally but you really only get three months out of a pool and this tub runs 24-7, 365. It's a commercial great setup and uh, you typically find this in a large hotel. It's just another one of my many do-it-yourself projects. I have uh, pictures of the construction from the start, so let's get to it. Okay, so these are still pictures of construction of the jacuzzi. I had my Hilti TE-52. First thing I had to do was get this monster rock out of here. It's basically a slab sitting on the ground. So I did dig a footing that went down about 18 inches. Formed up the slab. I was installing the building automation at Middlegate School in Newtown and I went out and there were eight sheets of this four inch polystyrene foam sitting in a dumpster. Sometimes you get lucky. Eight sheets of this stuff cost a fortune. I immediately went right into my truck and said I need that for the jacuzzi. So I put the rebar in, floor drain comes out there's a valve that's going to go on here a T here and it stubs up it's going to go to the skimmer call in the truck finish off the pad there's a stub floor drain built the inside form three quarter inch plywood there's ten jets you got your air comes in, goes to these five jets, one here, these three, one on the other end. Here's the water supply to these five jets. You can see you can go right through, feed through. This is the suction for the second one and a half horsepower pump. This is a supply for the other five jets. And this is the return from the skimmer. So this is the inside form. And you can see this is all going to be concrete in here. The outside form is going to be right on the edge here. That's going to form your bench seat. The concrete being under here. All this piping is going to be in concrete. Here's a jet. You can see the water comes in here. Goes up here. It shoots out here. This is the air inlet. Now this jet is a Venturi. And a Venturi creates a suction from the water flow and mixes the air right with the water and gives you the bubbles on the jets. You can see this is threaded here. And there's a white PVC face that screws into that and sandwich the three quarter inch plywood with the with the white front. So here's your skimmer. The stub comes up from the floor drain and half the water comes from the floor drain goes back to the pump. The other half comes through the skimmer. Here's the low point drain. It's the low point for all the water piping in the jacuzzi. This is what froze in 2010. I had a female adapter with a plug here and I failed to pull the plug out and the water froze and the only thing that cracked was the female adapter believe it or not. I got real lucky. See the four inch foam on the sides and that's the outside form that 
plywood there. There's the other end. Skimmer. You see at the dead end you have to plug the jets. The piping goes back to the house. There's a four inch foam. I had to jackhammer out the foundation here to get all the piping through. I used my Hilti TE-52. I gave it to Kenny Grandland up at the Mainstay Motor and up on the Cape in Wellfleet. It's got a real nice place there. Poor guy does all the maintenance and the whole place himself. Has a kid for a helper. I gave him my nail gun too. Powder actuated healthy nail gun. Talked to him recently. He still has all that stuff. You see the outside form is on here. I use threaded rod for form ties. He actually had hair. Trevor. All done. I had to let the concrete cure for 30 days at least. Peeled off the inside form. Unscrew all the face plates to the jets. Then I could peel it off. The whole project, I think, took like maybe 90 days to, to finish. And here it is all peeled off. This is blue thorough seal. I made this temporary box out here, mounted the heat push button, the jets push button, and the temperature control was out here now. The Allerton control system gives us a 0.5 degree dead band. Sorry to build a deck here. This is the original pump pad. And this Johnson control motorized valve here. The thing costs about a thousand bucks, I think. I just had it kicking around. Put that on there for the bypass loop. Whenever you hit the jets push button, the relay over here would click on and motor it open. Unnecessary. Now I have that manual bypass valve and set it for 50% is fine. The original control cabinet and the ever hot. This is a domestic hot water heater in most houses. Normally you hook it up so the boiler water goes to these two inch connections here and then your cold water comes in here and your domestic hot water goes to the faucets but in my case here I bring the boiler water here and goes back to the boiler on this pipe and the jacuzzi water is inside the tank and there's a coil in here that goes from here to here. This is a high limit. It's still in use today. That's for if you're heating and the pump is running and it fails. You don't want this to continue to heat because this PVC piping can only take about 120 degrees. It gets to 104, boom, it shuts off and that's it. You have to manually reset it. Operational test. Here's the quartzite on the top here and a natural finish. And here it is with the solid color stain. I do it every two years. Here's the repair I had to make. The low point here froze over the winter. The jacuzzi was drained. I had to saw out this joist here and make a trap door out of these four boards. And here's that stub. I was able to chisel out that concrete with the Bosch rotary drill. And you can see there's a few little nubs of where I chiseled off that female adapter. So I cleaned this up and was able to slip the coupling on there and glue it on. And a little pipe nipple here, inch and a half inch and a half male adapter and an inch and a half Hayward wall valve I had kicking around fortunately I had all the stuff and here it is so now I can drain the lower end of all the piping in the concrete this is the piping going back to the house 
from the jacuzzi under the deck all wrapped with foam insulation. I got my coffee together yesterday morning and went out and got into the jacuzzi, turned on the jets and I'm sitting in there. I'm thinking to myself, gee, them Hayward pumps, they're like 24 years old, they're really great, nothing ever happens to them, they're like bulletproof. And all of a sudden the jets died. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So I quick shut it off, I got out, dried off, I went down the cellar see what's going on. I turn it on and the filter pump is just sitting there clunking along. I said, oh gee, maybe something happened to the impeller. Something. So I pull it apart. Sure enough, sheared off. The impeller sheared off. I couldn't believe it. Fortunately, I had a spare impeller and two shaft seals because I was going to have to destroy the shaft seal here to get the stub that broke off. It was still on the motor shaft right here. Put in a new shaft seal. And you just screw this on by hand. You have to put a screwdriver through the motor to prevent the motor from spinning and you can spin this off. It's pretty much only hand tight because it tightens itself by rotation. Four bolts, nine sixteenths started and crank them on with the screw gun. From beginning to end it took about 45 minutes to do the job.